my daughter now likes basketball for some reason. So she wanted to watch the game together. And I told her how good this Dalton Connect was. I told her Zakai Ziegler is one of the best point guards in the SEC, if not the nation, and what he does. And I went on and on and on. Santa, Santiago Vescovi is starting to play up to par after he lost his grandmother. On and on and on. And then what did Tennessee do? They decided basically not to show up. And I'm going to tell you why I really wasn't that surprised. What the? What was he thinking? Release the hounds. The Dave Hooker Show. K -k 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 keep cool. A presentation of offthehooksports.com. All righty. So let me ask you this. Is it surprising at all that Tennessee, after getting some love, a possible number one seed, beating Kentucky, uh, winning the week, beating LSU, goes to AM on the road in a Saturday night game and plays flat? Because to me, I was not surprised at all. I thought Tennessee would play flat and win an ugly game. If you'd asked me before, they played uglier than just ugly. What did you think of the Vols' effort on Saturday night? Oh, it was very concerning. I thought that Tennessee actually was going to lose this game um, because I don't think right now, in, in this age of college football, a uh, college football, college basketball, I think losing road games to good teams like Texas A&M are not that concerning. Losing like that is concerning. And it gets back to what I talked about at the opening of the show, which is Tennessee's lack of depth. Guys, I want to bring up something to you real quick. Jemai Meshack played 17 minutes. 16 of them were in the second half because Dalton Connect got in foul trouble. He came in for one minute in the first half, and Rick Barnes then pulled him because he was upset about a play Meshack made and didn't play him the rest of the first half. So Barnes on principle did his whole, you don't get to play because you did something that upset me. Well, the result of that was, again, having other players log too many minutes, not having the defense you needed on the court, and falling behind double figures and having to fight back. Zakai Ziegler, in a loss that was really never that close, played all 40 minutes. Rick Barnes played Zakai Ziegler the entire game on Saturday. Did not give him one rest. Dalton Connect, Jonah, um, Josiah Jordan James played 31. Santiago Vescovi played 30. Jonas Adu only played 20, but that's because he got in foul trouble. And then when he got in foul trouble, Barnes still only put in Tobey Awaka for 12 minutes. So he was just willing to go small when Tennessee had no interior presence, which hurt their three-point shooting. Rick Barnes' stubbornness and lack, it's actually worse than I ever realized. I'm going to be honest. I'm watching it now and I'm thinking, I know he knows basketball, but he, good Lord, he misuses minutes. And it's, it, it really, I really never noticed it until now because Tennessee's good in so many other areas. But now I'm watching, I'm like, does he even know what he's doing with his minutes? Because I don't think he does, honestly. Because he played Zakai, Dave, he played Zakai Ziegler for 40 minutes, the whole game, in a loss that was never that close. I just thought they looked like they had dead legs. I'm, I don't think that, it's as big of a deal as you do because I think it's fixable. Now, the question is, is Rick Barnes going to fix it and go deeper into his bench and not find himself in situations in which his guys have dead legs? That is my, that is my question. Now, that's what is very disconcerting if he doesn't change his ways. That to me is where you're like, oh, well, you know, this might not get better and could get bad in tournament time. Once again, portions of the program brought to you by Andy Mason, andymasonrealestate.com, real estate experts with over four decades of uh, combined experience in East Tennessee, best prices, best service in the Knoxville area. Uh, but along those lines, do we think? that Rick Barnes is suddenly going to play more players and make sure that his guys aren't fatigued. I have no reason to believe that's the case. I mean, Caleb, has this been something that you've seen throughout his career or is this kind of a new issue with Rick Barnes? It's an issue that's been throughout his career that I never noticed. And I take full responsibility for never noticing it. But the reason I never noticed it is because there were so many other issues with Rick Barnes. You know, his belief in the mid-range, his belief in defense over everything. I thought there were so many other issues with his philosophies that I didn't pay attention to this one. But then I went back and I thought, 
he only played six guys with that best Tennessee team he ever had that was number one for three weeks and flamed out in the Sweet 16. He also had eras at Texas. He had a year in Texas, Dave, where he started 17-0 and in 2009, 2010. Got him to number one. But he was playing only six guys, and at the end of the year, they finished the year 7-10 and and flamed out in the first round of the NCAA tournament. This is what he does. And it's a big, big problem. And I, I don't know, I don't know what is going through his mind. You know, I watched the game on Saturday and let's be, okay. You can live with a road loss to a good team, right? In the SEC, a winning, uh, a Saturday night road game against a very good SEC team. You can live with a loss like that, right? Yeah. You can live if you lose when the other team is shooting 11 to 28 from three, just red hot from three, right? You can live with that. Yes. You know what I can't live with? Texas A&M for 40 for 34 of the 40 minutes on the court on Saturday didn't have anybody taller than 6'8. And they still had two more offensive rebounds than Tennessee in that game. That is winning 50-50 balls because Tennessee's tired. That's all that is. And people are going to say Jonas Adu didn't show up. I agree. He played horribly. But quite on, and he was, and he was on the bit. He only played twenty minutes because Barnes tried to go small a lot. It's hard for me to blame these guys though on the interior when, I mean, guys, Josiah Jordan James is gassed. I mean, he carries the defense all the way around, and Jonas Adu is gassed. And Texas A and M was winning 50-50 balls and winning 50-50 rebounds consistently on Saturday, and Rick. Barnes has got to start going into his bench. He needs to be playing J.P. Estrella, Freddie DeLeon, and Cameron Carr a heck of a lot more than he is. And I don't care about his philosophy of you earn playing time. Play them each like 10 minutes in the first half just to rest your guys. But like, you, you I don't get this. You earn playing time. I get it. You earn playing time. But you don't have to play them in a way that you can play them less than they want to play and still play them enough to give your guys rest. Here's the other thing too. And I know that the seedings aren't tied to where you finish in the SEC, but it would be really tough if things ended today and the selection committee got together to give Tennessee a one seed or even really a two seed when you have Auburn, uh, Alabama, and South Carolina with better SEC records, better overall records, except Alabama has one more loss it would be really difficult to get Tennessee even a two seat after the way they lost. If, if this, if we were going into selection Sunday, do you think they would even get a two seat if the season ended like it did on Saturday? No, I don't think you can give Tennessee a two seat at all. I mean, I think they they're firmly now. I mean, they're probably, I think they're barely a top 10 team right now. That's like 11 or 12, like right in that range, which is where a three seat is. So, yeah, I, I don't see how you give them. And by the way, I mean, they've got, you know, they weren't in the game with Texas A&M. And the loss to South Carolina was at home. Now, I want to give Lamont Paris a lot of credit. He's doing a great job. And by the way, South Carolina has won seven straight. And Kentucky has now lost three straight at Rupp Arena, funny enough. So, I, I by the, that Kentucky win doesn't even look that impressive anymore, quite honestly, because they keep losing at home. But, yeah, I... I don't think I'd give him a three seed. I I I wouldn't. And I I still I'm at the point. I'm pretty sure they're going to get bounced out in the first weekend if Rick Barnes doesn't choose to go more to his depth. Here's the thing that frustrated me about that game. If I'm Tennessee fan, okay, is A and M hit everything in the first half, right? I mean, they were doing heat check shots. I mean, yep. they, they they just nailing everything. The thing that frustrated me is not that. They heat checked it. I mean, that happens in basketball. You can get bounced. That's why the NBA play in a seven game series. I actually prefer to see who the better team is. I think that's a better way of determining. I know you can't do it in college basketball, but it, it ultimately has to affect you when somebody's hitting threes like they were. But that doesn't mean you get down and throw out the towel. I thought the th throw in the towel. I thought the body language went down. I didn't think they came out with a strong second half push. So that means that I think they were flat at halftime. Um, they made a little bit of a push midway through the second half, but it wasn't much. So let's open this up a little bit. After that game and more the way they reacted, 
are you concerned that Tennessee's a little soft? Show represented by Banks and Jones. Banks and Jones? Well, it's because they're Tennessee's trial attorney. You can play to win with Banks and Jones because they'll go to trial. You've heard of other lawyers. They say they'll go to trial and fight for you. They won't. They just want to settle. That's the easiest way out. Well, that's not Banks and Jones, led by T. Scott Jones. They won't settle. They'll go to trial for you. Tennessee's trial attorney. They play to win. Truly, Tennessee's trial attorney when it comes to criminal defense or personal injury. Why settle? It's Banks and Jones. T. Scott Jones. Banksandjones.com. You worried about Tennessee's mental toughness? How about that on the message board? Anybody worried about Tennessee's mental toughness? Because I think in that sort of game, you rally to get it within eight or 10 instead of just uh, ending up getting blown out by what was the final score. I mean, it wasn't even close. I mean, 85 to 69. I'm not worried about their mental toughness. I don't think how mentally tough you can be as mental tough, mentally tough as possible. The human body only has ha, has certain limits. And Rick Barnes, by playing his guy so much, is pushing those limits. Like he's really test. He's he's pushing those. He's pushing their bodies to the limit. That's what's happening here. Okay, this is he's overworking his starters, and that it's just that simple. Do you think he's that insecure about the backups? I think he has a belief that you earn playing time, and he wants to. He won't play these guys because he wants to teach them how to practice right. Okay, that we're past the point. I mean, at some point. I heard an he doesn't interview break from with, principle. He's so big on player development. I heard an interview with Phil Sims' son, Matt uh, Sims, or Chris Sims. And he's uh, in. Uh, he's an NFL broadcaster now. And he, they talked about the times that uh, Lawrence Taylor would call and ask for Phil Sims' help to get his clothes because he hadn't been home all night because he'd been partying and they had practice the next day. He said it happened several times. And it was kind of like this feeling of, oh, that's too bad for LT. And then Chris Sims said something I thought was very insightful. Maybe he just needed that edge. Maybe some guys aren't good practice players. You have to explore that. There aren't absolutes when it comes to personalities.